Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Homefront, dedicated to the men and women of America's military. I'm Mark Martin. More veterans lose their lives to post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury than combat. That's according to the Collateral Damage Project. We spoke with them as they were forming their organization to help soldiers and veterans free of charge. Clinical psychologist Dr. Timothy Barclay is a busy guy. In addition to teaching psychology to the next generation at Liberty University, Barclay also helps patients at a private practice. In the areas of the brain that are underfunctioning, we would seek to increase that activity. Prior to this life, Barclay was all about the military and law enforcement. He served in the Army and then 20 years as a police officer. In all walks, he seeks to save, and now that passion is rescuing veterans on the verge of ending it all. And it was actually through my years on the police department that I was exposed to, you know, mental health and mental illness, dealing with people in crisis all the time that I really became interested in the work of psychology. Estimates indicate a military veteran commits suicide each hour of each day. Barclay says treating veterans has been frustrating because many take 10 or more psychiatric medications. You're not really treating the core issue because what you're looking at is all the synergistic side effects of the combination of medications and it made treatment very difficult. Just really thinking about this in earnest and how, how can I circumvent this? What can I do to, you know, to really treat the, pa the population that I'm truly passionate about, but without giving these services away and going bankrupt in the process? It was like a light bulb that went off well, the only way to really do that effectively is through a nonprofit organization. That idea led to the Collateral Damage Project, or CDP, to help vets battling post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, and depression. The main goal of Collateral Damage Project is restoring what war has taken. And those associated with the organization say they recognize that veterans were willing to give their lives for us and our country that the least they can do is offer them the best kind of care at no cost. We're literally losing 20 vets a day to suicide because they don't have access to proper care. That's a figure that's dumbfounding. CDP will offer veterans an intense four-week program, including brain mapping, trauma-focused psychotherapy, and non-invasive brain stimulation techniques. So this, the red color that we're seeing here on the sides of the brain basically are, are telling you that this person has an overactive mind, maybe an aggressive uh, well, disorder they, of some sort? Well, they would have some emotional dysregulation, some aggressive type tendencies. The program will also offer a year of follow-up care for free. Therapist and retired Army chaplain Dr. David Mickelson works with Barclay. CDP is going to be a great program. I think the genius of that is bringing together multiple methods of treating trauma, doing it in a very intense format, which is great for military folks, and then bringing it all under the gospel of Jesus Christ and recognizing that spiritual renewal and redemption is part of every warrior's story. It's going to be great. Currently, Dr. Barclay is treating veterans here in the Lynchburg, Virginia area as they trickle into his local treatment center. But his goal is to expand it to a large scale center, treating the most severe cases of PTSD and TBI for veterans across the country. One of those patients is retired Marine Isaac Coley. My wife actually had to sleep with a pillow in between us because of how violent I would get in my sleep. So I had the VA. It would pop me full of pills and medications, and I had um, the support groups. I couldn't find what I needed. Coley says the treatments and spiritual aspect made a huge difference, including saving his marriage. Coley now wants to spread the word about Collateral Damage Project to fellow veterans. A couple nights ago, a friend of mine called me. He's going to take his life. And I told him, I said, no. I said, we veterans need to be the example of what a man can endure and overcome. Here to talk about the collateral damage of combat stress is CBN News contributor Chuck Holton. Chuck is also a former Army Ranger and still travels to and from war zones as a reporter. Welcome, Chuck. Hi, good to see you. You too as well. Chuck, you have a podcast called The Hot Zone, and you've talked about combat stress on it. You say there's the normal stress of being a soldier, and then there's the trauma of being on the front lines. Explain the difference. 
Well, I, I think that a lot of times these two things kind of get mixed together when you're talking about post-traumatic stress. And, uh, you know, the military is trying to kind of get away from calling it a disorder because what they're finding out is that, you know, it's actually very normal when you go through situations that you're really not created to endure, uh, that those kinds of very traumatic situations that you experience in combat. Um, it, it's your, your brain and your body's natural way of sort of digesting those experiences to have some of those uh, manifestations when you get home, whether it's uh, fear of loud noises, fear of, of crowds, um, sort of irritability, things like that. Uh, but I think that, that the difference that we see is that two things are getting mixed together here. And there, so the treatment is not usually correct because we're not separating these two things out. First of all is the, 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 the very small number of U.S. troops who are actually engaged in heavy combat. These are guys who are firing shots in anger. Uh, now, if you take the total number of people in the military, a couple million uh, people, uh, of those, of a, a small percentage, maybe 30 percent uh, actually deploy to combat zones. And of those 30 percent, a very small number are actually out off, off of the base, leaving the base to go out and maybe do patrols, combat patrols, that sort of thing, where they would be exposed to enemy fire. Uh, something like so, 36 percent of uh, that 30 percent are out there, you know, kind of, let's say, on the front lines, as it were. And of those, only about half are actually firing shots in anger. So when it really comes down to it, only about 15 percent of the uh, people who deploy to combat zones are actually engaged in combat. Very small number uh, these days, especially. And so those are the people who are being exposed to those kinds of, uh, you know, my buddy got shot next to me, uh, people's legs blown off, that sort of thing that, that they have to deal with when they come home. The other side is the, the very different atmosphere, very different culture that you're immersed in when you go into the combat zone or when, you go, when you're in the military in general. And that is the, you know, very no slack environment, uh, there are no sort of softening edges to the culture. Uh, it, it's, you know, there are no women. There are no, I, I'm, well, there are fewer women, no children, no old people. Uh, it's uh, all work all the time. And uh, so you get used to that kind of no slack environment. And then you come home and your, your car insurance got canceled or uh, people are, just being stupid at the mall or, or being, I, I guess I would say the best way to describe it is that you're going over there and you're engaged in a very uh, driving, purposeful environment with very little slack and you're getting a very good sense of the, the, the price of freedom. And then you come home and I've heard a lot of guys say that, you know, the, America is not at war. The Marine Corps is at war. America is at the mall. And there's a sort of resentment that builds. It's sort of a free-floating, uh, I, I call it culture shock that they have to deal with. And that's not post-traumatic stress, but it can manifest itself in some of the same ways. And so uh, I think that dividing those two things out and sort of uh, treating them separately would make it more effective to, to help guys that are going through these sorts of, um, you know, experiences. And quickly, Chuck, tell us about your experience on the front lines in Syria with the Free Burma Rangers trying to help the innocent victims of war there and how you're realizing it's affected you. Yeah, I've seen a lot more combat as a journalist than I ever did as a ranger, although I did see combat in the military. And I can I can tell you that when I come back from a very intense situation like that, again, it's a life or death. Uh, it, it, when you're in Syria, the decisions you make can r literally affect whether or not people live or die. And so when I come back home, I'm still sort of in that in that mindset, and it takes a while for me to sort of integrate back into the culture. Uh, so what I found is that I tend to be a little bit shorter with, with people, my family. Uh, my wife takes a wrong turn on the freeway, and I go, what are you doing? Like, you know, I, I would speak to her in a way that I would never speak to her normally. 
uh, and that's, I don't mean to, but it's just, again, if you take a wrong turn in combat, people could die. And so it takes a while to just sort of off gas and sort of get that out of your system. Um, and I think one of the problems that the military is facing is that they have a tremendous shortage of chaplains. And so they're not giving their troops the spiritual guidance and the spiritual resources that they need to work through these things. And indeed, during the Obama administration, many of the chaplains that they do have were not allowed to provide spiritual resources for guys that came in and said, I'm struggling with suicidal thoughts and feelings or whatever. They weren't allowed to share Bible verses. They weren't allowed to, to give them spiritual resources. And that is a major issue that is not being addressed right now. All right, Chuck is staying with us. And when we come back, a look at one ministry and its goal of restoring warriors. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back to On the Home Front. There's a ministry called Operation Restored Warrior that works to bring healing to the deaths of souls of military men and women. We went to their retreat in Colorado to see how they fulfill their mission of rescuing, rebuilding, and restoring. Veterans fighting overseas not only suffer physically, but emotionally as well. Hidden battle scars that make life difficult back home. That's where Operation Restored Warrior comes in. To find it, CBN News traveled to the heart of Colorado. With its wide open spaces and large horse corral, the Four Eagle Ranch resembles something out of the Old West. But take a closer look and you'll see much more. Organizers of Operation Restored Warrior say it's a location where healing takes place. While the program welcomes all faiths, its core Christian ministry is the five-day program called The Drop Zone. The Drop Zone is a place in enemy territory where you go take that ground. And very often in kind of Christian environments, we refer to things as retreats. I'm going to go to a retreat. And that just didn't sit well with us as professional military men. It's like, well, why are we retreating? How about if we go gain ground? So we specifically call coming to a drop zone a counterattack. That counterattack is threefold, rescue, rebuild, and restore. Warriors come to this place because they're, they're, they're looking for hope. And often the enemy has just beat them down. But this is the place where they know there's some hope. And then when they get here, what they find out is that this is where healing is because Jesus is here. ORW leaders hold to the belief psychology reveals Jesus heals and say it's been proven hundreds of times. For participants like Navy veteran Paul Williams, the program can be a literal lifesaver. July 2nd of this year, I had written a note and I was ready to go. And um, 
it just didn't happen. I went back to my truck to go get the gun and you know, it wasn't there. Um, so I just started praising Jesus with my praise and worship music and said, you know what? I need to give this ORW, Operation Restored Warrior, a really good shot. And that decision led to victory. I was able to open up to Paul, the, you know, the founder of ORW, about all the trash that I've been carrying. And it felt so good to finally just let it out. I came here fighting for my life. And I'm gonna walk away a champion. So, I love them a lot and I'm super thankful for it. Former atheist Paul Lavelle started ORW nine years ago. Around 2008, I felt like Jesus just put in my heart that he, he had gifted me my whole life to rescue people. And I felt like I had a unique gift of healing as well. ORW, our focus is to heal. And we bring Jesus into that healing process. I was definitely a, uh, a, a broken, broken man. Um, had a lot of depression and anxiety, um, a lot of anger, really a, lot, a whole lot of anger, um, and just felt lost. Dunbar accepted Christ during the drop zone and decided to get baptized. There was no question at all. I said, absolutely, I, I'd love to. Retired Air Force Chaplain Steve Frick also received healing through the program. ORW doesn't just help, they heal. And that's a little hard to hear when you first get here, but I'm telling you, it's true. In addition to powerful sessions building up the faith of the men, the drop zone also allows time for recreational activities like fly fishing. What can they learn from this? Lavelle says it nourishes the soul, among other things. The reason we do the activities is because it's, it's part of a spiritual longing uh, for a man to have adventure in his life. As part of this restoration process, we want to remind them that there is adventure out there. Retired Command Sergeant Major Chris Fields is the drop zone lead facilitator. He too once contemplated taking his life and also lost fellow service members to suicide. Fields understands the urgency of going through this program before it's too late. Don't wait another moment to reach out and to ask for help. I used to think that I you know, was 10 feet tall and bulletproof, but when I reached out for help, I'm stronger than I ever was. And it just takes one moment, one moment to say, okay, let me see what this is all about and then let Jesus take it from there. I am Regent's first ROTC graduate student. One. I'm Ephraim Graham. Welcome to Studio 5. Get on it. All that's new and now in the world of uplifting entertainment with celebrity interviews. There's a higher contribution I will make. Musical performances. I'll give you my best praise. Plus movie and TV news. See it and be uplifted. On Studio 5. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern at CBN.com forward slash Studio 5. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. 
easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. We are back with Chuck Holton talking about restoring wounded warriors. Chuck, before the break, we saw a report on Operation Restored Warrior. How important are ministries like these? Oh, uh, I, the, you cannot understate the, import, the importance of ministries like ORW. But like I was saying before the break, we need to get the military to allow guys to go to more of these. Now, now that is happening, but for a long time, chaplains were not even allowed to to introduce guys to ministries like this because they were faith based. But we know that Jesus is is the one who can actually heal. They, a, a drug isn't going to help long term. Uh, psychotherapy isn't going to help long term. They're, they've tried all sorts of crazy things. When somebody gives their life to Jesus, they regain that sense of mission, that sense of purpose that they had in the military that was the driving thing that they miss so much once they leave. Talk more about how you've seen men of faith do better with the realities of war than those who don't have a faith in God. I wrote a book called Bulletproof years ago, and I interviewed a military psychologist whose job it was to do the psychological evaluations for guys at the top level of the special operations pyramid. And what he told me was that they have found that a guy who has a strong faith foundation will always perform better, consistently perform better in a combat environment. He believes that's because a guy who has a strong faith foundation can just do his job, focus on doing what he's supposed to do, and leave the rest up to God. Whereas a guy who does not have that has a worldview that says everything is random chance, and that makes him much more likely to feel like he has to control his environment. And combat is, by definition, a very uncontrollable environment. So those guys get task saturated and can't perform as well. What is your best piece of advice for churches that want to help uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that they need to realize that these guys seek purpose. That's really what they want. Uh, the, 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 the trauma that they've been through, if they've been through trauma, uh, is uh, actually, I believe, secondary to the fact that when you get out of the military, you come home to this sort of, you know, corporate environment that just is so different that you want that driving force. You want to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And so we need to offer that to guys. But I also think churches need to start reaching out to guys that are deployed and try to integrate them into their ministries, maybe through online worship or something like that, in a way that we haven't done in the past. Yeah, that's right. Using technology, possibly, in different ways right. to reach the military. Would you agree? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. We didn't have that av availability before, uh, but now we've got the ability to actually let guys worship with us. When my son was in Afghanistan uh, last year, he, he could not go to church for 10 months because the church was on the other side of the base and he was always on call and he wasn't allowed to go that far. So now with the, the internet, guys can actually worship with us and I think we need to offer that, maybe offer services that are live at the time when these guys would be able to watch over there. Yeah, makes perfect sense. All right, Chuck is still here when we come back to talk about the heart of the soldier, their family. Stay with us right here on On the Home Front. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 9.30.
Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No for balls, man. Come and... Oh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. We're back with On the Home Front. Thanks for staying with us. Chuck Holton has been on the front lines and everywhere in between during his military service. Chuck, I'm sure, though, home and family were never far from your mind. How important is a family's support to their loved ones in uniform? I don't think I would have been able to do this job for as long as I have if I didn't know there was uh, somebody at home waiting for me. Um, that's one of the things that makes being deployed so lonely is that when you feel like there's nobody there that is waiting for you to come home. Uh, it was one of the most difficult things about being a single soldier when I was in the military is that the guys who were married had a wife to call, had somebody to, you know, that they could call all the time, and I didn't. And so uh, that is super important. Quickly, how can we support soldiers and families? Well, I mean, I, first of all, we can pray for them. And I, we can reach out to them now. Uh, like I say, there are, there's technology now that allows us to do that in ways that we couldn't do that before. So uh, I think that we can pursue that as a church, as Christians, uh, trying to find ways to reach out to soldiers. And again, get them involved. Give them that driving force that is, you know, uh, being a part of something bigger than themselves before they get out. And then that transition won't be so difficult when they do. And of course, we know prayer is important. Like you just said, I wonder if you'd mind closing yeah. us in prayer for our troops. We've got about a minute left. Pray for them okay. and their veterans, actually troops, veterans, and their families. All right, let's do that. Father God, we just uh, come to you and beg you, Lord, that uh, you would show us the right ways that we can uh, reach out to the men and women who are deployed around the globe, standing on the wall for us in more than 170 countries. Uh, Lord, we, it, it's easy for us to get busy with our own lives and forget that there are so many who are still out there safeguarding our freedoms, and, and they are doing that. So, Lord, we pray that, number one, those men and women would be safe, but we also pray that you would give them a, a purpose beyond the military mm -hmm. so that when they get out, they won't struggle with those feelings of just being, um, you know, worthless and, and right. not having a purpose anymore. So we thank you for giving us a chance to do that. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Chuck, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. That's going to do it for On the Home Front.